What's good everybody? This is Robo back with another video and in this video we'll be going over all my picks for week one of the college football season. I won't give a pick for every single game as obviously every single team in the country is playing this weekend. But we're going to quickly go over all the Power 5 games as well as some of the Group of 5 ones that are pretty solid. As you may have seen in my last video, I'll be keeping track of all my picks throughout the season, giving an overall record, an against the spread record, and then a close spread record to see how well I'm doing predicting the tough games. If you don't see a game in here, either there was no betting lines for the game or I just don't have a prediction for it. We've got a couple great games this week that were really tough to pick. So let's go ahead and get started in order of when each game kicks off. Thursday kicks off at 7 p.m. with Wake Forest and UCF both playing Kickstarter games. Both teams should handle business fairly easily against inferior competition. NC State UConn could be a decent game, but I think the Wolfpack handle business as well. So I'm taking them to cover the 14 and a half point spread, winning 31 to 14. The most anticipated game of Thursday slate kicks off at 8 between Utah and Florida and Salt Lake City. And I think this could be a really solid game depending on Graham Mertz's performance. Because of the unknown nature of this Florida team, I'll take Utah to pick up the win. It's 27 to 20, just getting past that four and a half point spread. Minnesota Nebraska is our first Big Ten matchup of the season between two teams with new quarterbacks looking to prove they can hang in the Big Ten West this season. I think Nebraska will keep this one close, so I'll take their side of the spread, but I like Minnesota at home in a tight one, 23 to 21. Here are the rest of the games on Thursday night. No picks for any of these games besides the obvious winners. Michigan State takes on Central Michigan and East Lansing Friday night and enter the game as two touchdown favorites at 14 and a half. There's a genuine possibility the chips fire up some luck and keep this game close down to the wire, but I think it's fairly low, especially with MSU coming off the season they just had. I'll take MSU to cover that 14 and a half points with a 34 to 17 victory. The battle of the Miami should be a fun one, but the U should be able to take care of business behind a pretty solid defense and Tyler Van Dyke slinging the rock. So I've got them covering a 17 point spread with a 37 17 final. We should get another solid game out of Louisville and Georgia Tech as the hosting Yellow Jackets named former Texas A&M quarterback Haynes King QB1 and they could be in for some spoil business this season. I think anything over a touchdown is a bit much for a spread in favor of Louisville so I'll take Georgia Tech to cover but follow the Cardinals 30-27. The final game of Friday's slate should be a great one as New Look Stanford heads out to Hawaii as 3.5 point favorites and based on what I saw in Week 0, the Rainbow Warriors can keep this one close and should throw all over Stanford, but I think they still fall in a nail-biter 31-27. We've also got Eastern Michigan and Kansas kicking off their seasons on Friday, and both teams should win fairly convincingly against inferior opponents. Saturday is a jam-packed slate with some really fun games, and kicking off the day is Michigan and East Carolina. As a Michigan fan, I don't enjoy this one, but I like ECU spread here. 36 points is pretty high, although Michigan can absolutely do it, but with reports of multiple members of the secondary out for precautionary injuries, and a bunch of position battles still ongoing, and then the suspensions of Coach Harbaugh and more, I think it's likely ECU keeps this one within 5 touchdowns. My final score prediction is going to be 44-16 Michigan. Tennessee kicks off their season against Virginia, and even as 28 point favorites, I think it should be higher. It depends on how dialed in Joe Milton is, but I like him to start the season with a statement and jump into the Heisen race early with an emphatic 47-13 win. My lock of the week comes in the next game with Colorado and TCU, and although I think this TCU team may be a bit underrated now because of all they lost to the draft, I don't see Deion Sanders getting crushed by three touchdowns like the spread shows. I'll take Colorado plus 20 and a half as my lock of the week, with TCU still hanging on for the 34-24 win, but I truly would not be shocked if Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders had major impacts on this game, and it ultimately went in the Buffs' favor. The Oklahoma Sooners start their 2023 campaign as massive favorites over Arkansas State, no prediction against the spread in that one, but I'll give a score prediction of 45 to 10. Cade McNamara and the Iowa Hawkeyes take on Utah State at noon and currently sit at 24 and a half point favorites. I'd probably stay away from that line, but if you trust the Iowa offense is worth a look, they should dominate this one defensively, so I'll go with a 30 to 7 final score. Staying in the Big Ten, we've got Purdue taking on Fresno State with a really close spread as a result of all Purdue losses this offseason. I like Hudson Carr to have a strong debut here and pick up a tough fought win 30 to 23, covering those four points. Also at noon, we have Kentucky and Ball State. I like Kentucky big here, 41-13. to 26 and a half is a lot, but I'm a big fan of Devin Leary and those Kentucky receivers. Louisiana Tech picked up a Week 0 win over FIU, and now they head to SMU as massive underdogs. And although I think they lose, I'm not sure it'll be in blowout fashion. I'll take SMU to pick up the win, but Tech against the spread, 34-20. to The last game of the noon slate is Boston College, favored by 8.5 over Northern Illinois. And I think it could be even closer than that, as there's a lot of question marks around this BC team. I think they pick up the win, but I like Northern Illinois to keep it close with a final score of 27-23. Both Arkansas and Ole Miss should start the season 1-0 as they take on FCS opponents. Quinshawn Judkins could rack up a ton of yards here for an early Heisen push. At 2 o'clock, Temple takes on Akron, entering as 10-point favorites, and I actually like Akron to keep this game tight. I've got Temple by a touchdown, 30-23. Heading out west, we've got Bo Nix in Oregon looking to dominate another FCS opponent in Portland State. 
and Washington may be getting a tough matchup with Boise State. I like Washington to make an early playoff statement connecting for a solid win against the spread, 35-17 over the Broncos. Ohio State starts the year on the road against an Indiana team that I rank second to last in the Big Ten this season. Maybe the Buckeyes experiment a bit with the quarterbacks in this game, but I think they can cover the 30 points fairly easily, even on the road. I think they win big, 49-13, as they look to figure out that quarterback race a bit more. Texas enters their game against Rice as five touchdown favorites, and I wouldn't be shocked to see Quinn Ewers come out on fire, lighting up the Owls' defense. I'll take Texas, 56-10 in that one. Luke Fickle kicks off his Wisconsin tenure against Buffalo as heavy favorites. I'm not a big fan of that spread number, as it's right around my final score prediction, but I've got the Badgers, 38-10. Also at 3.30, we've got Auburn taking on a broken-in UMass team who impressed me a lot in Week 0 compared to last season. Auburn is going to dominate this game, but I'll take UMass plus 35.5 this time around with a final score of 42-13. Western Kentucky starts the season as 11.5 point favorites over South Florida, and I think they can cover there as South Florida was just abysmal last year, and Austin Reed proved to be an excellent quarterback for the Hilltoppers last season. I've got the Hilltoppers winning easily 41-24 on this one. Also at 3.30, we'll see Sam Hartman play his first game in South Bend after a massive performance in Week 0 in Ireland, as they take on Tennessee State in what should be an even bigger blowout than the Navy game. And then of course, Maryland should take care of business against Towson, as Talia and the offensive weapons should have a field day in that one. At 4 o'clock, North Texas plays host to Cal, who enters as favorites by less than a touchdown. I'm not too confident in this pick, but I like Cal by 10 on the road here with a final score of 34-24. The number one Georgia Bulldogs take on UT Martin in a warm-up game that will give us our first look at Carson Beck. No spread available for that one as it should get ugly pretty quick. Number six USC plays their second game of the season against Nevada. The spread is absurdly high at 38.5, but they definitely can cover. I'll stay away from that one though, but I'll give a final score of 49-10. to 10. At seven, we've got number 16 Kansas State starting the year off against FCS opponent Southeast Missouri State in what should be a fairly dominant win. And then we've got my breakout candidate, Evan Stewart and the Texas A&M Aggies taking on New Mexico with a 38-point spread. Another game I'd prefer to stay away from, but I like A&M big. I'll go with a 45-10 final in that one. We should get a solid game out of Washington State and Colorado State, but even on the road, I think the Cougars can handle business and cover the 11.5-point spread. I like them by two touchdowns, 34-20, as they get ready for Wisconsin in Week 2. Another solid game at 7 between Houston and UTSA, and I like Houston as a home underdog to pull out a win in a thriller. This should be a fairly big offensive game, and I think it'll go down to the wire, but I've got Houston with a 34-31 final. Alabama takes on Middle Tennessee State to start the year, and even as 39-point favorites, I like to tie it here. I think they come out hungry after missing the playoffs last year and absolutely dominate this one, 52-7. Penn State will face a Power 5 opponent Week 1 with West Virginia, and this will be Drew Aller's first start for the Nittany Lions. I'm taking Penn State to make a playoff statement in this one, blowing out the Mountaineers 38-13. One of the best games of the week will be the Battle of the Carolinas and Charlotte, as Drake May will take on Spencer Rattler in what should be a thrilling matchup. I think May outperforms Rattler in this one, but the South Carolina defense is a bit better and will be enough to hold off the Tar Heels 35-34 in what could be the game of the night. Illinois starts our season off against Toledo, and I think Vegas is slightly disrespecting Illinois here, as I think they can definitely win this game by double digits. I'll take Illinois minus 9.5 with a 31-17 final score. Texas Tech will head to Wyoming for their Week 1 matchup as two touchdown favorites, and I like Tyler Show and the Red Raiders to get off on the right foot, handling business 35-17. Number 24, Tulane, will host South Alabama as just 6.5 point favorites, and I think it's a bit disrespectful to Michael Pratt and the Green Wave offense, as yes, they did lose Ty J Spears, but they're more than capable of winning this game by a touchdown plus. I'll take the 6.5 points and predict a final score of 31-23 Tulane. Virginia Tech takes on Old Dominion again here in Week 1, and after last year's upset loss, I'd be surprised if Virginia Tech isn't out for revenge and covers that 15.5 point spread. I'll take Tech by 20, 37-17. The late games on Saturday start with BYU and Sam Houston, with the Cougars favored by 20, and honestly, I think Sam Houston is solid enough to keep this one closer than that. I can see this one being close in the fourth, so I'll take Sam Houston plus 20, but I'll go with BYU to pull out an easier win with a late score, 34-17. The last game on Saturday should be a fun one as UCLA takes on Coastal Carolina as two touchdown favorites. And I like Coastal to keep this one pretty close. I like UCLA this season, but I think Dante Moore raises their ceiling quite a bit over Ethan Garbers. And with how good we've seen Grayson McCall be, the Bruins could be on upset alert here. I like UCLA to still come out on top, but by just a touchdown, 34-27. to Here are the rest of the games going down on Saturday that I didn't mention. As I said, no prediction for these games or just no lines available to go with. Sunday brings us a few more games, starting with a Big Ten matchup at noon between Rutgers and Northwestern. And based on my Big Ten preview, I've got Rutgers winning this game outright and against the spread. Six and a half points just isn't enough for me, considering the entire offseason Northwestern has gone through. This one could be somewhat close, but Rutgers shouldn't have too much trouble at home, winning 27-17. to 
At 3.30 Sunday, we've got DJ Ungalale making his Oregon State debut against San Jose State, who we saw in Week 0. And I'm not really sure how to feel about this game, but I think Oregon State picks up a tough win. I like San Jose State to keep it within two scores, but ultimately falling 37-23. to Sunday night brings us the best matchup of the week, number 5 LSU and number 8 Florida State from Orlando, Florida. This game is nearly impossible to predict as both teams bring experienced quarterbacks back and loaded rosters. I think it all depends on how much of a difference the FSU receivers can be and if the LSU defense can control the game without Mason Smith in the middle of the line. I went back and forth in this one, but I'm going to take LSU to win and cover in a thriller 30-27. to Monday night brings us the final game of the week from Durham, North Carolina. It's Duke playing host to the Clemson Tigers. Clemson enters the game as a 13-point road favorite, and I think as long as Klubnik is in control of the passing game, I like the Tigers and the points. They should be able to handle the Duke offense enough to take this one without too much sweat. I'll go 35-17 Clemson. That's it for all my week one picks. I'll be spending my Saturday in Ann Arbor watching my Wolverines kick off their season and then tuning into the rest of the slate later on. Let me know down in the comments which teams you guys are fans of, as well as which games you're most excited to watch this week. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.